He don't know. He does not know. You want me to bring that tail out to school? The Prime Minister turn and ask him, Dale Hoyt coming. I beg your pardon. This, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You must, you must have those conversations in the back. Don't come out here and have them. The Honorable Prime Minister turned to the AG. How it coming? It's the same place the, uh, the, the, the amendment to the sexual offences at is. This gentleman, through you, sir, the Honorable Attorney General was supposed to amend the sexual offences at months ago at the suggestion of the court. You practice in the criminal court, sir. Please ask him. Please ask. Beg your pardon? <laughs> so that the one enterprise that is doing well on robots, on, not robot, they're not doing well up there at all. The one enterprise that is doing well along the Bay Street corridor is in peril of this government. And I read in the budget speech that was delivered yesterday, once again, Hayat will be built. I heard it last year. I heard it in 22. I heard it in 21. I heard it in 20. Of course, before the government change, one moralist opposed it on the ground that he wanted to commune at his father's graveside. And the shadow cast by the Hyatt would prevent him from so properly communing with his father's spirit as the body lay in a grave at Bethel Methodist Church. But after the 2018 election, he has ceased his protestations against the construction of Hyatt. Partisan politics is such a beautiful thing. And it does make for strange bedfellows, I think they say, that his act of communing with his father's graveside is no longer a matter of priority. And presumably now, he also favors the construction of Hyatt. But blood is thicker than water, and his protestations have turned the approbation of that project. But where's the lady whose land was confiscated? Has she been paid? The government of this country came to this parliament and use the Compulsory Land Acquisition Act to take up, I'm not going to call her name, to take up the lady's land to build the high act. Today, there's a man out there cutting the grass to keep the site tidy. Not one of the 18 stories have been constructed. But again, it appears in the Honorable Prime Minister's budget presentation yesterday that once again, Hyatt will be built. So we have built Hyatt. This government has built Hyatt four times. I don't chase ambulances. But if I were her lawyer, and I hope she does not come to me because I don't advertise. I would hustle this government into court on a constitutional motion, AG, for deprivation of her property. Has she been paid? You got to pay the lady or give her back her land. Oh, she has, oh, oh, she has a, a good lawyer. She has a good lawyer. She doesn't need this. She doesn't need me or the speaker. I remember to mention my name when he said shit. Not at all. Not at all. 
speak on your own behalf, my Yes. Only may I speak on your own behalf. Yes. You can't speak on mine. She right to put you in court. But, I repeat, savvy on the bay. A success story that gentleman has developed just as he did, just as Haman's was done. I believe they're small investors at Haman's. I believe they're small investors. I'm here, Prime Minister, I'm here, you know. I'm here, I am speaking, but I, he's dropping on you. Oh, let's say it to me now. I am frightened, you know. <laughs> frightened. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. You worried about them. They're very happy. And in a couple of years, they're going to be more happy than you planned for them to be. <laughs> but uh, the plan had been for a stretch of hotels along that Bay Street through town by the Pearhead, hearing about the Pearhead project. Again, I defer to the government. Barbadians are not seeing these developments. We keep hearing about them. We keep hearing about them. Please, government, please attend to these matters for the sake of tourism. Uh, I haven't come to rehash the figures in tourism that uh, Barbados has become so expensive. I haven't come to complain necessarily. The complaints have been made about the $70 US tax that is paid by visitors. I'm told that. I haven't come to complain about that. Uh, what I want to complain about though is this government's propensity to put other people ahead of Barbadians. I say this in here before and I, I don't mind saying it again. I said it last time when I was sitting and I'm standing today. At 58 years after independence, we can't find anybody from the Caribbean to run our premier industry. That we go all the way around the globe and bring a gentleman here claiming that he is Superman. He gone. I knew you would have chased him out. As I said earlier, he tried his best to say nothing to Barbadians and he succeeded. The man came here and never made a speech. And I don't want to disparage him, but it is said that he used his time here and used up our hard earned dollars and salary while gaining postgraduate qualifications. That is said. Not bringing any tales out of school. The man used us. And the people of this country remember what this country was told, that he's Superman. Wasn't the honorable member for St. James Central. He wasn't in the seat then. A lady minister told us, oh, this is Superman. He was hate hunted. And if Christ doesn't come, he will. He left late one night quietly and achieved nothing in tourism. Please, government, through you, sir, let us consider that this country produced a Garfield Sobers and they're unveiling a statue next week to Sir Charles Griffith and they have one to Sir Wesley Hall and I hope Seymour MacDonald Nurse will follow soon I ain't getting one. Good dear. <laughs> but the point is, 
This country has produced excellence. And I defy the honorable member through you, sir, for St. Michael Southeast, for saying it here last week that we must be on a hunt for the best minds and the best people. We have them here. Sir Garfield was an example and a symbol of the excellent of excellence of which this country is capable. Not only on the cricket fields, cricket was a metaphor for our abilities and our capacities to produce the greatest in the world. And these futile searches that are conducted all over the globe, looking for these super people when we have super people right here, 1966, honorable member through you, sir. The greatest cricket that was ever played by a human being in the history of test cricket was played in 1966 in the summer in England. And it was a Barbadian from Bayland, a boy who traversed that village with bare feet and humility in his heart and he bestrode the cricketing world like a colossus while the others like petty men scampered between his legs trying to find themselves dishonorable cricket graves indeed I have two classic scholars across from me and I was saying that for them, honorable member. No, I was saying it in your hearing, but it's for them. Let them tutor you. So that when these hunts are made in England and South Africa and Hong Kong, we have excellence here in this country. And these expeditions in self-negation must end. Quickly, sir, I want to come to international business. The international business sector is in sharp and dramatic decline. It brings in hard cash, foreign cash to this country. And the Honorable Prime Minister is looking in the direction of the Attorney General again. To save me. <laughs> I'm grateful. But the international business sector needs attention. The sector previously contributed up to 64% of total corporation tax collected, plus adding high paying jobs to our young people. I used to feel so proud when a young lawyer disappeared from the bar and a young accountant disappeared from the firm or the small firm at which he was working, and then I'd hear. They're in the IB sector, the international business sector. Well paid, well protected, well rewarded, and lots of prestige. And the sun seems to be setting on the international business sector. While Cayman and Tortola continue to thrive. And in case this government does not know it, we're losing some of our young professionals to those countries. Because the sector here is dying. And they have gone off into those countries seeking their professional salvation. There are treaties, I suppose, that must be signed from time to time. I am not omniscient. I, I have a right to be wrong. So I will not disturb the government's uh, efforts on the details of the treaties and so on. But while the Attorney General came in here a few weeks ago boasting that Barbados had received afresh its positive designation, still the industry is dying. And he may want to account for the cabinet for an industry that is dying under his charge. Small business. 
government's attitude to small business seems patronizing. I want to say that a, 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 a loan of $5,000 in inflationary circumstances is not a lot of money. There are very few businesses, very few businesses, that can thrive on a $5,000 capitalization. And either the government takes small business seriously and increases the loan amount, or we will agree that it becomes a slush fund and that it will not be taken seriously by anyone, including the government. And it certainly will not be taken seriously by any business associates of the person who borrows that money. But of course, I go back to the theme I visited earlier, that our young graduates in business now live in a country in which they're told by ministers in high places. We have to look for the best minds and the best people. That is a most unfortunate statement uttered in the hearing of a proud Barbadian population. I turn to social policy. And social policy, Your Honor, involves matters of education, work, and health, and well-being. And a government always has an obligation to address social needs such as employment, education, health care, housing, and sustenance. I come back to the allocation made to the Prime Minister's office. Barbadians need to know this, that there is legislation before this house The Appropriation Act 2024 Bear with me, sir. I'm going to read these figures. In Barbados, we know that it is traditional and historic. It's a historic mandate that education always gets the largest chunk. And it always gets the largest chunk, as I said earlier, because education has been at the heart of justice and democracy in this country. It is not an accident. And education Bear with me, sir. I'll find it. Number 87, education. The appropriation is for the sum of $417,315,778. million will be allocated to the Ministry of Education in the year 2024-25. Wow. Again, that is in keeping with that historical mandate to continue to educate the young people of this country not for the sake of their vanity but for the sake of social elevation of an entire country upliftment of an entire country education uplifts individually but it is the collective upliftment of a country that is more important and that is why we have lived in a democratic tradition in which education has received, I hate cliches, but the lion's share. Coming second has always been health, because health is important. I heard Prime Minister say yesterday that if a country is not healthy, it doesn't exist. I heard that. It is nothing. 
And that is why the Ministry of Health and Wellness gets 236 million. Brace yourselves, Barbados. Brace yourselves, Barbados. The third highest allocation in this appropriation bill is going to the Prime Minister's office. $188 million allocated to the office of the Prime Minister. $188 million and we sent home people last year. Please forgive me for shouting, but I wanted my voice to reach those people. That while the Prime Minister's office is appropriated, allocated the sum of $188 million in one financial year, we are sending home people in this country. We are telling them they're not worthy to grace the fields of our employment. What are their children doing tonight? Every one of us in here has represented them. I repeat what I said last year when the government offered to me to submit names of those people for employment, $500 a week. $500 a week. Honorable Mr. Speaker, to St. Thomas through you. And we sent them home. That is why I quarreled in here last year with y'all. Y'all didn't know I was leaving. Y'all didn't know. You did not care. <laughs> I have no doubt you didn't care. So if you don't care about me, why stay around you? Why stay around you? You sent home the poor people. You told them that $500 a week is not good enough for them. But you can put $188 million in the Prime Minister's office. Ask, Mr. Speaker, I want to know tonight where that $188 million is going, where is it being spent? You thought I could read? No, I want you to tell the poor people of this country. Yes, yes, the Honorable Member. No, no, I want it to come from the mouth of the Prime Minister. You will get a chance. You don't shout me down. Y'all will get a chance. All of you. All of you. All of you. Don't come at me like this. I am not alone. I, in fact, I am alone out here, but I'm not lonely. I am alone, but I'm not lonely, honorable member. But while you become disquieted, I will disquiet you yet a little more. That 67 people were taken to Dubai on a climate change conference by this government you're writing again pick up your pain you're writing their names who are there what glad tidings did they bring back from dubai funded by the taxpayers money through the prime minister's office no doubt while poor people in this country can't get 500 dollars a week in a little job cleaning the roads of this country cleaning the grass pieces of this country and y'all sent them home sent them home and tell me that you care you belong to the class of the indifferent you don't care about them and you surprised that I gone and you tell me that you didn't care nothing about me <laughs> yes 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 Judas you call me you did not care 188 million dollars prime minister visited in here yesterday prime minister visited this debate yesterday i'm not going to i'm not going to oppress her any longer 
I just want her to tell the people of this country what the Prime Minister's office is doing with $188 million every year when a portion of that $188 million can safely employ the people who were sent home and more will be left over. Are these trips so important? My mo yes, I'm for real, member. I am for real. Don't let me talk out your business. Don't let me talk out your business. All right. Don't let me talk it out. Bring back the people to work. And you will still have some money for the trips. And you will still have your consultants. I have no doubt that there are honorable members in this place who want them re-employed. Let give yourselves a chance. Speak to the Prime Minister during cabinet meetings. Now have some courage. Say something sometimes. Going there and say, Prime Minister, I want back those jobs for my people. Prime Minister, I want you to stop traveling so much. Prime Minister, I want you to fire some of those consultants who could get a job easily. And if anybody thinks that I'm being unreasonable, let the public know that the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, in case anybody's thinking, well, we don't know what that gentleman is talking about. There's a separate allocation for the Ministry of Finance in the sum of $185 million over the financial year April 1st to March 31st next year. So there's no doubt in the figures. The Honorable Member for Christchurch West has the book and he wants to disclose the figures. Well, let him disclose them. Let him disclose them and let him disclose the details. But this is a government of consultancy. And where is this country? What is, how are we better for a regime of consultancy? Is this government incompetent? The people of this country know that there's a consultant called something like a protocol to the cabinet. Her role is to teach manners to cabinet members. I heard that. I heard that there was somebody consulting on protocol these nonsense jobs and a poor man from Crab Hill can get a, can get a little, a little uh, $500 a week or a poor, poor lady from Prout or Welchman Hall can get a job or one from Bank Hall. Any other protests? Any others? Well, we will stay with Crab Hill, I'm proud for the time being, your people can't get jobs because the Prime Minister's office is overspending on itself and overspending on consultants and overspending on overseas travel. Yes. Yes. It troubles you. Does it trouble you? Well, if it troubles you, say something to the Prime Minister. Don't leave it to me. Don't leave it to me. You're cross-talking, you know. You're cross-talking. And I can take you on. I'm going to take you on. Justify this to the people of Barbados. Tell the people of Barbados that the people you sent home, tell them that there's enough money circulating in government coffers to employ them. And you belong to a government, all of you. That is sacrificing poor people in this country for an expensive lifestyle. I say that without fear. Without fear. Do the calculations, $500 a week for, for 3,000 people. Tell me if that comes to $188 million in one calendar year. It does not. Money will be left over. You could get a commercial flight to London or New York, not on a private jet. You start me. You start me.